the Charles Manson trial. Charles Manson was a notorious American criminal who, alongside with his followers, the Manson family, would make him one of the most infamous criminals in history. Charles was born on November 12, 1934, in Cincinnati, Ohio, to Kathleen Maddox, who was a 16-year-old girl who was both a prostitute and an alcoholic. Charles was placed in a boys' school at the age of 12 when his mother was jailed for armed robbery. Rejected in his attempts to return to his mother, Charles was soon living on the streets and getting by through petty crimes like theft. Over the next 20 years, Manson spent time in and out of jail and reformed schools and prisons for various crimes. He was released from prison on March 21st, 1967, and then moved to San Francisco. In order to talk about Charles Manson and his crimes, it is inevitable that we have to talk about the family. The Manson family first formed in San Francisco when Manson was released in 1967. As the following grew bigger, they moved northwest of Los Angeles to Span Ranch. The group of around 100 followers partook in an unconventional lifestyle, participating in sexual orgies, the habitual use of hallucinogenic drugs such as LSD and magic mushrooms, and frequent lectures by Manson on the meaning of the Beatles song, Helter Skelter. The Crime on August 8th of 1969, Manson ordered four of his most loyal family members, Susan Atkins, Patricia Creenwell, Lisa Caspan, and Charles Watson, to enter the Tate residence and to destroy everyone in it as gruesomely as possible. The group arrived at 10050 Celio Drive in Beverly Hills, which was the property of actress Sharon Tate. Sharon was staying with her four friends. A day later, on August 9th, Manson and six other family members stabbed to death Lino LaBlanca and his wife, Rosemary. The crime scene. Sharon Tate and her house guests were discovered by Tate's housekeeper the next morning. The word pig was written in blood on their door. The housekeeper called the police immediately and they responded with emergency. The La Blanca couple were found by their children a couple days after their murder. The words death to pig and helter skelter were found printed in blood on a wall in the refrigerator door. Theories about how the crime was committed. Manson was not present for the murder of Sharon Tate and her house guests. Although it was very evident that Manson had extremely loyal followers who could be coerced into performing murder for him. Both the Tate and LeBlanca victims were found with inflicted stab and gunshot wounds. The evidence. The police were unable to locate any of the knives, guns, or bloody clothing directly from the crime scene. However, two weeks after the crime, a 12-year-old boy had found a gun in his backyard near the Tate residence. Having heard about the murders on the radio and the gun used for the murder, the father had insisted that the police check it out because the calibers had matched. On December 16, 1969, forensic were able to match a fingerprint taken from the doorway of the Tate residence to the gun that had been in police custody since September 10th, when the Los Angeles boy had found it in his yard. This became a pertinent piece of evidence used in the case. It was clear from the crime scene that the cr crime was committed using guns and knives. However, they did not know for sure until the gun was collected into evidence. Additionally, when Susan Atkins was in jail, she informed some of her prison mates about where they threw the buddy clothes. A TV crew ended up then searching for the bloody clothes, which were thrown on the side of a mountain hill and ended up discovering the bloody clothes of the victims. The arrest. Surprisingly, the police did not arrest Manson and his family on suspicion of the Tate LaBlanca murders, but because they had vandalized a portion of the Death Valley National Park. When the police raided the ranch, they found multiple stolen vehicles, and they were taken into custody with no connection to the Tate LaBlanca murders. It wasn't until Susan Atkins 
a Manson family member who was at both of the murders, was held in detention on suspicion of murdering Gary Hinman, which was an unrelated incident that led detectives to realize that Manson and his followers were involved in the killings. The prosecution's case. Prosecutor Vincent Baglosi was assigned the Tate LeBlanca case. Baglosi's principal witness was Linda Casaban, a Manson family member who was present for both the Tate and LeBlanca murders. The main arguments made by the prosecution were that Manson's domination, power, and influence he had on his family members could coerce them to do everything, even murder. Without a doubt, Manson was the leader of the family. His scope of influence ranged from the most simple to the most complex tasks. He decided where the family members would stay, where they would sleep, what clothing they would have and when they would wear it, and when they would be having their meals and when they would move. Manson was seen like a godlike figure. Family member Danny DiCarlo testified that Charlie sees and knows all. Casavan was told by the others, we never question Charlie. We know that what he's doing is right. One witness also testified that death is Charlie's trip. It really is. The last argument made by prosecution was Linda Casavan's testimony. She testified that on the evening of August 8th, 1969, at the Span Ranch, Manson told her and three other family members, now is the time for Helter Skelter. He ordered her to get a change of clothing, a knife, and her driver's license. Casaban complied for fear of what he would do if she didn't. Prosecution was able to use the evidence when forensic specials matched a fingerprint from the door of the Tate residence to one lifted from Sharon Tate's bedroom to two of the suspects. The gun found in the backyard of a resident near the Tate property was the key piece of evidence in this trial. Additionally, Susan Atkins indulged her cellmates in the crime she committed, along with where the defendants dumped clothing, maybe. The police found the discarded clothing of the defendants. The defense case. Charles Manson, defense attorney, was Ivorin Kinnerick. The main argument he made was that Manson was simply the equivalent of a politician who said outrageous things and that he was being persecuted because of his lifestyle. The defense tried to discredit the Crown's case by saying that the prosecutor's principal witness, Lisa Casaban, was not competent and is completely insane. Patricia Krenwinkel's lawyer tried to explain that her fingerprint found in the Tate residence was there because she was invited. Additionally, the defense tried for mistrial when Manson walked into the courtroom with a newspaper that read, Nixon says Manson is guilty. The judge overruled this decision when the jury swore under oath that they wouldn't let this newspaper article influence their decision. The verdict. On January 25th in 1971, the jury came to a verdict of guilty for all charges of murder and conspiracy against Charles Manson. Manson and defendants Susan Atkins, Patricia Creenwald, and Leslie Van Houten were convicted of first-degree murder for the deaths of the Tate LeBlanca victims. Manson was sentenced to death but was automatically commuted to life in prison after California's Supreme Court invalidated all death sentences prior to 1972. There was no final statements made by the judge or the jury.